Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of M Crater Lore. So today what we're going to be working on is actually getting the texture um, done for the uh, prairie dog, which we started working on last, well not last week, the week before that. Um, doing alternate weeks now for uh, between tutorials and the lore series and it seems to be working pretty good so uh, one of the issues that I had was the textures didn't align for some reason I'm not sure what was causing this issue it might have been an older um, map or something but uh, I ended up just deleting the um, the map that I did make and then just created a new one and that seemed to do uh like fix the issue so um yeah regardless of where i I tried putting things it just didn't match up to the size of the image that it was so <laughs> i'm not sure what was going on with that but um i ended up just uh eventually deleting it after <laughs> making several attempts to actually try to scale things and i wasn't sure what was going on so uh, i was uh, i just needed to generate a new one and yeah so basically that's what i started with and once i got the um uv mapping part figured out i could uh start working on actually um texturing and stuff like that but i needed space to make an alternate thing um now last episode what we worked on was to kind of recap was um basically we made a couple different variations of the model uh, one for standing and one for sitting and I was going to do that into separate entities but then I realized that I would have to swap between them and just an idea that I had was to actually go ahead and use the same same mo or same entity just swap out the textures uh, for the UV map and I think that's possible now that we have um, certain entity um settings in m crater now so what i ended up doing was just exporting it and then i could basically go ahead and remove or duplicate all the cubes because i needed to have um cubes over on the other side so basically i needed to rename all these and then i could start duplicating them so i'm just adding um like a one or a zero right next to it and then i could duplicate it and basically just make sure everything's aligned now i did notice that there was some alignment issue with the tail which was actually the body uh after i found out that the tail was just fine so i ended up undoing a few things and fixing that uh, i think after i moved this but i noticed that things weren't aligning properly uh with the um thing there you can kind of see the textures glitching and stuff so i just undid out everything that i made including moving the tail down and then I also moved up the um, the body so it was aligned. So once I did that I could actually start moving the parts into place and what I wanted to do was make sure that the entity was still center. So when it stands up I want it to be within the same location of the center of the um, actual entity. So basically everything just basically gets shifted around so when it's standing and yeah that's basically what i started working on i just want to make sure that the rotation for everything was set up properly and making sure that everything would look normal and then i could start working on duplicating the noses the feet things like that so i think the front paws were the next thing i came back to that later because i needed to um adjust some of the uh, angles and stuff like that but um that was after I started texturing and stuff, but I needed to set up the um, kind of like the hitbox or not the hitbox, the um, position for the rotation and stuff. So like the pivot point, that's what they call it. So once I did that, I could start moving it in to locations and I can finally start duplicating the feet. So the feet needed to be semi connected to the um, actual actual entity and I needed to make sure that all this was uh, set up correctly or it wouldn't work. So basically once I did that, I could basically go ahead and uh, start working on the um, moving over the actual UV map cubes to the second uh, map, which is on the right hand side. So 
basically I just needed to shift everything over and what we'll be end ending up doing is we're using we're going to be using these two maps to toggle the texture between the two models so basically what will happen is when one entity uh, in this case the one that's on actually walking is visible then only that map will be visible or the other map will be hidden so we'll be toggling these textures through variables for the entity itself so that will allow us to kind of keep the position and rotation for the entity and we won't actually show the um the difference so i'm using this as a kind of guide for the coloring I know it's kind of like a uh, artwork drawing, but it will give me a, a nice palette to work with. And it's based on a uh, prairie dog, so I'll be able to kind of use the colors, maybe adjust the colors a little bit once I get the palette kind of set up. But um, for example, I want to make sure that the these ones have a little bit more of a ready tone. They didn't really match up to the expectations that I wanted, so I adjusted it a little bit more. And I'm going to want like a dark black kind of gray for the, um, the eyes. So that's something that I'll need and probably something like a gray or something for the uh, feet as well. So um, for the claws and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the, my palette. And I'm going to start with the head and just kind of work with that. And kind of use this as a reference to see how... The coloration for the um, patterns and stuff are located so I needed to make sure that the um, entity itself had kind of like a uh, underbelly of a lighter color and from there I wanted to make sure that the top kind of color of the head was more of a um, you know the red tones that we selected before so uh, yeah, basically I started with this and then I could do a little bit more detail work. Um, this will not all show uh, perfectly, but it will give us a good starting point for texturing and stuff like that. Now the thing with a lot of entities and stuff is you don't want too much detail, but you don't want um, like you don't want it too noisy either, right? So you don't want it noisy and you don't want it... Um, to be like not enough detail so you kind of have to plan out a lot different of where everything's going to be and I was experimenting with some eyes just to see what would look best uh, for this particular entity and I did come down to d deciding that the best look would probably be with the eyes on the side like this so it will kind of give a idea of you know it, it being small and stuff like that the other eyes didn't really match up too well so I was playing around with the face and then I was looking at the how it would basically look and I decided to kind of go with something like this but I didn't want it all to be like an incomplete black nose so what I ended up doing was I added some um, actual color around it to give it that impression that the nose is just at the front there and that kind of blends in with the rest of the face a little bit well too. Um, once I got that done I could start working on the paws a little bit so I needed to figure out where the positions are for the paws themselves and then I needed to basically texture the uh, stuff around this. Now this was a little bit harder to determine because uh, there's we haven't had we don't have the body made yet and I could have started with the body but I wouldn't have known where all the connections and stuff needed to go so I started with the feet because then I had something to work with for the body and then I can match everything up for based on that particular texture but in the end it, it did turn out pretty good I just needed to um, make sure that like I updated the um, feet and stuff after because I did end up using a pretty dark color uh, for the feet and um, I needed to make sure that you know everything was properly aligned and stuff so the next thing that I needed to do was basically find out where the uh, parts are for the um, the the back feet and the legs so I needed to make sure that everything here is aligned with the actual detail so the other foot down below would be the um, 
basically the uh, what do you call it thing for the um, the claws so I needed to figure out where the claws were going from there but I needed to also make sure that I had the right tones and stuff that represented the entity as best as possible so I started working on uh, just experimenting with the positions and stuff it's a lot harder to do when I'm working with um, like a 3d model like this because you don't have a perfect idea of where everything's going to be at the end so after that I could start working on the front claw or back claws which I needed to kind of um, copy over and stuff like that so I was just experimenting with this and I needed to uh, figure out what side the claws actually needed to go on so it wasn't the top like the front claws for some reason it was more on the bottom so or I think the front claws actually are in the same position actually so yeah basically I just started working on that and then I could start finally texturing um, blending it in with the top piece that we created and once I did that I could start working on the uh, body but I needed to make sure that uh, the the feet itself looked pretty good for the actual textures and stuff and I needed to kind of start blending in the top feet as well so this is took a pretty good amount of time to actually do because I needed to make sure that you know it will uh, stand up to the working with the actual finished version and stuff like that so finding a good balance in pixels when working with something on the scale is really hard uh, though it's probably easier for when you're first get starting with like pixel art for entities and stuff I found it actually really easy to um, come up with the entire texture but I can't imagine starting off with something like a coyote or uh, bison would have been very easy for my current skill level in this so I'm um, glad I started with a prairie dog and that will give me some ideas of how to better texture something a little bit larger and stuff too right so um, sometimes bigger isn't always better and starting off when you're start starting to learn something it's probably best to kind of experiment with uh, how things actually are so all right, so yeah, that's basically this part. I just started um, leaving, I left in the back feet so I can kind of texture around the entity, um, figure out where the parts and stuff would basically go. And I started texturing this kind of shape around, I was, I was looking at the shading for the entity and I noticed that it kind of, kind of went around like this a little bit. I'm not sure if that's the exact realistic uh, texture of them but um, most of it's pretty much the same so um, once I started working with the top though I needed to kind of blend that in with the head and I needed to kind of figure out whereabouts everything needed to go for that so I started blending it in with the medium texture a little bit and I wasn't sure what to do with that part right down there so like I was going to keep it for the belly part but then I'm like okay I don't really know if that's gonna work so I started kind of um, making the belly a little bit more rounded and I needed to do that the rest of it in the actual map part so it's kind of like this and then I could start filling in the area with the um, texture here so basically just kind of experimenting with the thing and I, I ended up going with square belly because it um it didn't look as proper for the full size so I needed to add a little bit more detail around the parts that were too big for uh, distance and that's where I kind of started filling in the um, chest parts and other parts around here just to kind of give it a little bit more detail for the um, color part and it's, a, it's part of the darker belly color so it kind of blends in quite well actually I think so that's basically what it looks like when uh, fully composited into a single entity I was just working on some other details around the back end and I needed to kind of see how different shapes and stuff would actually look and just tweaking it a little bit sometimes helps 
but I didn't want to like overdo the detail either. So I just started working with this as a baseline and I used the lightest uh, color for the chin here and just a little additional texture under the belly. Now I realized that after I did all these changes that there was a layer system enabled. I'm not sure how to disable that or even delete that. So I ended up having to re re do a lot of the textures and stuff because that whole layer system is just really annoying and hard to work with. Um, I'm not used to it and it's just I haven't had the time to actually look up how to just get rid of a layer and like I can get rid of one layer but it doesn't get rid of all of them and it doesn't sync to an external program like paint.net or whatever which I've been using to um, which I needed to actually sync the textures and stuff up to so it I had to actually undo it until I didn't have an, textures enabled or layers enabled so if you have any ideas on how to disable that, please let me know in the the comments because it's a really annoying feature and it just drives me nuts because it's not the first time that it's happened for things like this. It's happened for uh, blocks as well and it's just really annoying to actually work with, especially when you need to kind of go between a application like a paint program and uh, do things inside the paint application itself. So. All right, so after I redid all the textures, I ended up just going in here and just cleaning up the final parts that um, I needed to do. And as you can see with the layer system, it wasn't actually syncing up with the, the texture itself. So for whatever reason, it wasn't synchronizing with my changes to the main map. And, you know, without, you know, totally figuring out how to get rid of it, it just, I tried undocking it, I tried everything, I just, it just wouldn't go away. So I had to undo all my changes that I ended up uh, making, which is really frustrating. But um, again, if you have any ideas how to actually get rid of that or disable it preferably, uh, that would be really helpful um, if you have any ideas how to do that. But I haven't gone through the settings or anything like that, but it's just a ridiculously stupid feature that gets in the way from actually being productive and I really wish they didn't add it. I mean, yeah, sure, if, if you're working strictly in the application itself, then yeah, that works, I guess, but it just becomes really of a nuisance for actually working with the uh, thing. As you can see, like the whole side texture for the, um, the part for the UV map, I ended up having to do undo so many changes because of that layer system and then I had to like redo a lot of it in the paint program itself so it was just really frustrating so eventually I was able to synchronize the changes and then I had to like update them all but overall I think it turned out pretty good so all right so basically right now what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up the um the pause and I needed to go ahead and actually retexture some of this on the other map because these changes were for the entity that was standing so as you can see there's uh, some parts that I missed for the pause that might not exactly be proper so I needed to make sure that they were properly textured and stuff and I needed to make sure that the pause were oriented in the way that they would be standing up not on the on the ground so I needed to rotate these 90 degrees upwards so they would be more like this and then for the bottom ones I could just copy over the uh, UV map once I was finished with that so I just made sure that all that part was done so once I got the texturing on that I was just checking the back feet just to make sure that everything was properly set up and then I could go ahead and uh, make sure the position was um, exactly where I wanted it so some of these positions weren't exactly set up Correctly because I was rotating it and where the hitbox or the position the pivot point was so I need to make sure that was uh, set up All right, so once I did that I could basically Copy that over to the other map. So all the changes that I did on the feet for the front paws were uh, sent over and Then what I went ahead and do it did was uh, basically save the entity itself and I'm going to actually make two textures for this. I needed one for 
the uh, entity when it's crawling. So basically this map right here and then, or the other map, and then this one will be for when the entity is uh, perched up. So if I wanted to add more different states, what I could end up doing uh, later on um, is basically expanding the uh, model to support different uh, kind of actions and stuff and then just toggling between different uh, maps and stuff like that so but for now I think this is going to be good so I'm going to import the uh, model and I need to set up the head rotation for both or for the groups and then set up the paw rotation for uh, legs I think because those need to be moving for the actual feet and stuff so once I did that I could basically alternate be between the two feet at the back so it makes it look like they're walking uh, with opposite feet so it's not so unison with how they're walking and stuff like that so that will help when we're actually going ahead and uh, actually bringing it into the actual application but for now that's um, basically all I have time for thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed mm -hmm.